These remains are likely to lie. And we find skeletal remains of somebody that look like it could be him. A car park, a skull split by swords, a spine bent like a question mark. When archaeologists dug beneath the asphalt of Leicester in 2012, they didn't expect to find a king, let alone a secret that would shake 500 years of royal history. His name was Richard III, England's last Plantagenet king. Killed at the Battle of Bosworth Field in 1485, his story was rewritten by victors and immortalized by Shakespeare as that of a hunchbacked tyrant. For centuries, the world believed the myth. But 500 years later, beneath a parking bay marked R for reserved, archaeologists uncovered the truth. Literally, the grave of a king lost to time. Before we dig deeper, subscribe to Stone and Bone, where history is excavated molecule by molecule and truth is measured in bone and blood. For centuries, chroniclers claimed Richard's body had vanished, tossed into a nameless river, erased from memory by the victors. But one historian, Philippa Langley, refused to believe the legend. In 2012, guided by 15th century maps and an unshakable hunch, she traced the ruins of Greyfriars Priory beneath a city car park in Leicester. Parking bays replaced cloisters, concrete covered centuries, yet somewhere beneath those painted lines, a king was waiting. The team from the University of Leicester Archaeological Services began to dig, carefully cutting through layers of asphalt until medieval soil appeared, untouched since the Reformation. Every tile, every nail, every fragment of pottery was logged and labeled. Each centimeter brought them closer to rumor turned reality. Then, on the third day, a trowel scraped something curved, a spine twisted into a perfect S-shape. Moments later, a skull cracked by the force of blades. They had found him, or at least someone who had died like him. The trench fell silent, cameras clicked, the air felt heavier. But bones alone can lie. Could these really belong to the last Plantagenet king? Or was it another anonymous soldier lost to war and time? DNA would decide. What would it take for you to believe bones could rewrite history? Ancient DNA is fragile, fractured by centuries of heat, water, and decay. Finding it intact in a 15th century skeleton borders on impossible. Yet inside a molar and a fragment of thigh bone, Dr. Turi King and her team found genetic material still clinging to life molecular echoes of a medieval king. In sealed laboratories, scientists wore full suits and ultraviolet hoods. Every tool was sterilized. Even a single fingerprint could destroy the data. Bone powder was extracted, frozen at minus 80 degrees Celsius, and sequenced twice, once in Leicester, once at Tartu University in Estonia. Both runs told the same story. The researchers targeted two genetic lines, mitochondrial DNA passed from mothers to children and the Y chromosome passed from fathers to sons. Through 19 generations, genealogists traced Richard's sister, Anne of York, to two living relatives, Michael Ibsen in London and Wendy Daldig in Canada. When their samples were tested, the mitochondrial DNA matched perfectly. Statistically, a one in a million chance. The world erupted. Headlines declared the lost king found. Richard III's identity, it seemed, was finally confirmed. But the scientists weren't finished. Next, they turned to his father's line, the Y chromosome, the genetic thread of kingship passed from father to son. So far, this is just confirmation. Richard's mother's line was proven. But when scientists looked at his father's line, what they found next, nobody expected. Here's where it gets wild. The Y chromosome, the unbroken male line that defines dynasties, didn't match, not even close. When scientists compared Richard III's Y-DNA to living male line descendants of Edward III, the data refused to obey royal law. Richard carried haplogroup GP287. His supposed cousins carried Y2, a completely different branch of the human family tree. Somewhere between Edward III and Richard III, a royal father was not the father he claimed to be. Genetically speaking, the bloodline had broken. Think about this. Wars were fought to protect that line. Brothers were executed. Thousands died for a chain of inheritance that, biologically, might have been false all along. Historians call it a false paternity event. Science calls it mutation of lineage. But to a monarchy built on divine right, it was treason by blood. If the break happened early, perhaps with John of Gaunt, the entire Tudor dynasty that followed would stand on uncertain ground. If later, maybe the modern family tested carried the error. Either way, the myth of pure blood collapsed. 
The discovery hit headlines in 2014. The Guardian called it a DNA time bomb beneath the monarchy. And yet the silence from Buckingham Palace was absolute. If one hidden affair could rewrite royal history, what else could DNA reveal about power itself? Beyond scandal, Richard's bones told a subtler story, one written in chemistry. Through isotopic analysis of carbon-13, nitrogen-15, oxygen-18, and strontium-87 over 86, scientists traced the map of his life. His teeth captured the rivers of Yorkshire and the East Midlands, confirming where he'd grown up. But adulthood left a richer chemical signature. The nitrogen and carbon ratios screamed privilege, a diet of swan, crane, venison, imported cod, and enough wine to stain his very skeleton. Even trace metals – lead, silver, tin – proved he ate from gilded plates and drank from pewter cups. His scoliosis measured between 70 and 80 degrees, raising one shoulder but leaving his strength intact. Muscle ridges along his spine showed the training of a seasoned fighter, not a crippled villain. DNA phenotyping added the finishing touch – blue eyes, light brown hair, and fair skin. Identical to the earliest portraits painted before Tudor propaganda darkened him into a monster, each discovery stripped away another layer of myth. Shakespeare's hunchback dissolved, replaced by a human being. Brilliant, flawed, and ferociously real. The monster vanished. What remained was a man, and his bones were finally telling their side of the story. August 22, 1485, Bosworth Field. The final battle between the Houses of York and Lancaster. For Richard, it was the last sunrise of the Middle Ages. Forensic analysis revealed 11 distinct wounds carved into his bones. Nine were to the skull. Two were instantly fatal. One blade split the crown of his head, another pierced the base of his skull and into the brainstem. Death came fast, brutal, and surrounded. Smaller cuts on the jaw and cheekbone showed the frenzy of close combat. Another wound to the pelvis, inflicted after death, told a story of humiliation, not warfare. He was stripped, displayed, and mocked by those who replaced him. Yet, the evidence proves something Shakespeare never wrote. His skeleton shows no signs of retreat. The blade marks cluster in front, not behind. He fought to the end, on foot, encircled by enemies, refusing to flee even as his allies fell. Think about that. 500 years of being called a coward. And the truth was carved in bone all along. If history could put words in your mouth for five centuries, wouldn't you want science to speak for you? The propaganda had crowned him a monster. But his remains reclaimed his honor. For once, the dead had the final word. Five centuries later, March 2015, Lester fell silent again. This time, not for battle, for closure. A horse-drawn hearse carried a simple oak coffin built by Michael Ibsen, Richard's modern descendant. Inside lay the same bones that had once been buried under a car park, the same DNA that had shaken a dynasty. The procession stopped at Bosworth Field, where a handful of soil from the battlefield was placed in the coffin. Earth returned to its owner. More than 35,000 people lined the streets as choirs sang 15th century hymns. The sunlight through cathedral glass fell over the casket like absolution. Archbishop Justin Welby spoke the words that seemed to close the circle. In the bones of a king, we find the humility of mortality. And yet, beneath that peace, an irony lingered. The same DNA that restored Richard's name had fractured the myth of divine blood forever. Science had rebuilt his dignity and quietly dismantled the illusion of royal perfection. That day, England buried its last Plantagenet. But it also buried the idea that lineage equals truth. What other myths might crumble if we tested the stories we've been told? What started beneath a parking lot became a scientific turning point. Richard III's genome, decoded in 2014, didn't just identify a king. It rewrote how we study the dead. Before that, archaeology relied on bones, pottery, and chronicles. After him, it spoke a new language, DNA. His genome opened the door to the ancient DNA revolution that soon reshaped our understanding of humanity. Within four years, scientists reconstructed the face of Cheddar Man, Britain's oldest skeleton, revealing dark skin and blue eyes. By 2020, the Viking DNA project traced migrations across Europe and Asia, proving they were far more diverse than legend claimed. Then came the Romanovs, the Inca mummies, the Egyptian pharaohs, all retested using the same techniques first proven on Richard III. According to Harvard's Reich Laboratory, over 20,000 ancient genomes have now been sequenced worldwide. Each one dismantles another myth of pure blood or divine ancestry. 
but Richard's discovery remains different. Most DNA reveals knowledge, his revealed doubt. It forced history to face the uncomfortable truth that even crowns can lie. If DNA could expose this secret after 500 years, what else could it still uncover beneath our feet? From a forgotten grave beneath asphalt, a king rose to challenge history itself. His bones silenced rumor, his DNA humbled power, and his story proved that truth doesn't kneel before crowns, because in the end, history isn't carved in marble, it's written in flesh, preserved in bone, and decoded by time. Richard III's rediscovery wasn't just about finding a lost monarch. It was about learning that evidence, not lineage, decides what endures. Five centuries later, the battlefield has changed, dot today, comma. The fight for truth is fought in labs, and science holds the sword. If this story made you see history differently, hit like. Share it with someone who loves uncovering the past, and subscribe to Stone and Bone, where every grave, every genome, and every forgotten name still has something left to say.